think I've told you the story of Chokun Na. He was a meditation monk who spent most of his life as a monk. In fact, all of his life after his first five years as a monk in the monastery in Bangkok. One night he was doing walking meditation outside of his hut. He had made sure that electricity hadn't been brought to that part of the monastery when he was staying there. And this young monk, who had been there for about a year or so, came running up to him and said, I've got this horrible thought in my head and I can't get rid of it. It just keeps eating away at me. And Jaku Na says, well, you're following the wrong duty. Went into his hut. Fortunately, the young monk had been studying enough of the Dharma to realize what Jaku Na was saying. The four noble truths, each of those truths has a duty. And thinking about thoughts that wear you down, about what's wrong with you, or things you've done in the past that you feel ashamed of, is not one of your duties. That's nothing to develop. What you develop is the factors of the past. And one of the factors that's important there is motivation in right effort. Because you do have other duties you've got to do, and if you waste your energy by pulling yourself down, you're neglecting your duties with the, the Noble Path. That's why recollection of your generosity, recollection of your virtue, are both really important parts of the path. They're not there to make you just feel like you're good as you already are, but they're, not, they're there to give you the energy you need to pick up your duties and carry them on. Because as the Buddha said, death can come at any time. Just the thought, here I've got a breath that I can breathe in and breathe out, let me practice for that breath. And if you're thinking that way, you're being heedful. If you're sitting there thinking, I just want to wallow in my misery for a while, that's heedlessness. Sometimes we think that it's being realistic, that we really believe the voices in the mind that say, I'm a really bad person, I'm a horrible person, I'm never going to get anywhere with this practice, I might as well give up. That is a destructive voice, and it's not really helpful in the path at all. In fact, it gets in the way. This is one type of thinking that the Ajahns in Thailand are constantly hammering against. Just sit there and you're destroying yourself with your thoughts. That's not helpful at all. You make yourself a burden to yourself, and often you make yourself a burden to others. But the most important thing is that you're neglecting the duties. You've got this opportunity right now. You've got this breath coming in right here, right now. And you don't know how many more breaths you're going to have. Death comes. It can come very swiftly, without any warning. And your last breath should be one that says, at least I practice with that breath. I'm right here. And when you're thinking about your generosity and your virtue as an habitual practice, it's going to make it that much easier to remember those things when the moment of death really comes, when you need something good to hold on to. If you're constantly wallowing in thoughts of things I've done in the past that were really embarrassing or things I've done that were really horrible, those thoughts are going to come back as an habitual groove in your mind as the body weakens, and especially when there's the sudden surprise, hey, this is it. And the mind just starts grabbing at anything. You don't want to be habitually grabbing at that kind of thing. So think about the times you've been generous, so that question we this afternoon. What gift did you give that you most enjoyed giving? That's something we should actually think about. It might have been a material thing, it might have been a gift of your time, a gift of your energy, a gift of your knowledge. What's something you really enjoyed most giving? And we're talking here about gifts that are not required, like for Christmas or birthdays or whatever. They're the more spontaneous gifts. Similarly with the precepts, the times when you could have harmed somebody or could have harmed yourself, but you didn't. You're glad that you were able to make it past the temptation. Okay, those are thoughts that you want to be able to access easily. Unlike the girl today who was asked what gifts she most enjoyed giving and she was caught up short. 
After all, today is the day about getting, but the important thing is realizing it's, it's in the giving where the real joy is. You get things and they're interesting for a while, and then you lose interest and you look for the next thing and the next thing. And the joy that comes from getting something doesn't last very long. The joy that comes from having given something, that can last for a whole lifetime. The joy that can come from realizing I could have done something really bad and I didn't do it at that one time at least. That's a joy that has a lot of staying value. And it's there as part of your motivation and right effort. It's something to be developed. Again, it's not to give you the sense of, I'm a great person, but it's enough to give you the sense, okay, I've got some worth to me. And I can take that worth and I can take that energy that comes from reflecting in these ways and devote it to the practice. This is an aspect of being heedful. You have to learn how to connect those two ideas in our mind. All too often our idea, our idea of being heedful is, uh, is learning to be critical of ourselves. Say, this isn't good, that isn't good. There are things you do have to let go of, but the letting go requires a certain amount of energy. We don't let go out of weakness, we let go out of strength. And the strength has to come from a sense of our worth. So learn how to cultivate that sense of your worth. It's a duty. It's a friendly duty. And this practice is not an easy one. No one can ever promise that it's going to be easy. There are, as the Buddha said, there are some people for whom it's quick and pleasant, but those, those have already gone. We're the ones remaining. It's going to be hard and it's going to take time. So you've got to learn how to strengthen yourself from within, and this is one of the important ways of doing it, one of the most healthy ways of doing it. And if you look back and there are no gifts that you really are happy that you gave, well, start thinking up some gifts that you would be happy to give. Again, if you don't have the money, think about the gifts of your time, gifts of your energy. We're here in the monastery. It is an economy of gifts. Everybody here is giving one thing or another. Nobody's getting paid. But you might want to think about extra special ways that you might want to give something that you'd feel really satisfied with having given it. Because the effect of that ripples through. When the Buddha started his gradual discourse, he always started with generosity to get people ready to see the Four Noble Truths. He wanted them to reflect on the times that they had been generous. And they went on to the precepts of virtue. They wanted to reflect on the times they've been virtuous. And think about the rewards of these things. They lead to rebirth in heaven. Okay, once he'd strengthened you in that way, given you a sense of your own well being, okay, that's when he'd say that there are limitations here. But you look at the limitations after you've been strengthened, after you've got a sense of your own inner worth. And then when you think of the limitations, that's when you're ready for renunciation. When you're ready for renunciation, that's when you're ready for the Four Noble Truths. So we're building up to our appreciation for the Noble Truths by getting the mind prepared through our generosity, through our virtue. So that when we let go, we let go, as, as John Lee would say, we let go like rich people. We don't let go like paupers. Paupers let go of things they don't even have. It doesn't really get them anywhere. But we've got this inner worth. And the thing about it, when you let it go, it doesn't go anywhere. It's right there. You're not latching onto it, as the Buddha said, when you start getting too obsessed with it. Measuring yourself against other people, okay, that's when it becomes a burden and actually becomes an obstacle in the path. But learn how to reflect in a way that gives energy to your practice, that heightens your heedfulness. You realize you need strength. 
to face this difficult path. And part of the strength comes from remembering the good things you've done, taking joy in that. So see it as a duty, a pleasant duty. Don't feel embarrassed about it. Some people feel embarrassed about extending goodwill to themselves or thinking about their past generosity because they feel, what's well, not real. It's real. I mean, we admit that there are things that we've done in the past that are not so good. But for the sake of putting it into suffering, you don't want to dwell on them. Take energy from things that give you strength and then apply that strength wisely. That's what keeps you on the path.